Hi, welcome. I am here with an incredibly special guest that I have been beyond excited about to have on. And I will tell you right now that I say a lot of times I'm excited about my guests because I have some amazing guests on this show. But Jenny inspired me like no other. Um, when I saw her video on Instagram of what she did, and I'm, I'm going to save that for a minute, I just was like, I have to talk to her. I have to have her on my podcast because the podcast is called Your Age Is Not Your Cage with Carla Allen. And we're all about women and men, but mainly women that just get outside of the box and they they realize that the age is not their cage, that they still can do things at any age. And Jenny does exactly that. She has an amazing story. She's such an inspiration. And so welcome Jenny McCall to the podcast. Hi, Jenny. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate all those nice words that you said about me. I know. Thank it's you. always nice to hear, isn't it? Yes, indeed. <laughs> well, and the beautiful thing is you did totally inspire me. And the, the, the first time I saw and heard about you was on Instagram. And you were on American Ninja Warrior. And I watched the clip on there. I was like, no way. And when <laughs> I heard your age, and then when I watched the full thing, I literally was in tears because Aww. just watching you get through that obstacle, watching your face. As you looked at your daughter, I, I just couldn't do it. It made me think of my daughter. And it was like everything within you just said, it's okay. I got this far and I'm not finished. That's what it said to me. And um, so that is how I came to know about you. But I want to back up a little bit before we really talk about that. And I want you to share like your background, your story, because you didn't just all of a sudden become an American Ninja Warrior. <laughs> kind of tell us what your background is and just a little bit about your story. I'd be happy to. And uh, thank you for that, because the uh, American Ninja Warrior was a, a wonderful uh, start because of my daughter being there and coaching me and also competing. But uh, it was a, an amazing experience. And uh, I'll start with the how I may have gotten there. It may take a while, though, because that's I'm okay. One years old. <laughs> There's a lot of territory to cover. That's okay. We can go back because I, I love your background and all that you've done. And I think it's it's an important part of your story. So uh, I grew up in Knoxville, Tennessee, and um, a wonderful background. Um, I uh, decided that I wanted to go into dance. And I started in third grade, and I continued dance. And at 16, I swore to myself that I would always exercise. My parents did not ever exercise at all. So I'm not sure where that came from, but just maybe from the dance, the discipline of dance, which helped me continue to at least keep active. Um, and I decided to go to New York and become a professional dancer. And at 20, I left uh, college and I went to New York, which was a, a, an amazing difference between Knoxville and going to New York City. So especially at, at age 20. But I gave myself five years, I said three to five years to see and give it enough time that I could actually make some progress. And I did uh, some uh, modern dance and I was in some uh, companies and on scholarship and did a lot of dance. And then I started to break away and do a little bit more acting and uh, ended up doing a Broadway show called Pippin in 1974. And I went on the road with it and came back and did it on Broadway. And on Broadway, it was like the top of the top. It was like walking down Broadway going, I'm playing a lead in a Broadway show. It was it was like, you know, the top. I mean, where do you go from there? Um, but, you know, all things change. And, and uh, I consider those golden years. Uh, from, from Pippin, I went on to do TV commercials. I played a lot of housewives and moms from... Um, I did, you know, Folgers and Mr. Clean. And I, I, would love to, and, I would love to see some of those commercials. They were actually on YouTube. Okay. Um, yeah. So you can see it. It's under my name, uh, you know, Jenny McCall. And you can, you can see uh, on my page that I have like dozens of these commercials. I couldn't find them all, but you can see them. And they're fun because 
it was in the 70s and 80s. And so there were 60 second commercials and people watched the commercials because they didn't have DVRs. So there, there's some classics there, like Sizzleine, where the bacon flies out of the, the fry pan, um, and Jordache jeans. Uh, of course, everybody loves Jordache jeans. I mean, Wonder Bread, um, Folgers, of course. So that was a, you know, that's why I call it the golden years, because you get residuals. And that's when I met my husband and I got married and we had two children and they started to go to school in the city. Um, and like I was starting to say, all things, all good things sometimes come to an end. So um, the divorce ended that and I couldn't stay mm -hmm. in the city any longer because it was just too expensive for me. So my my kids, my dog and I moved out to the country. It was a very remote location. And that's where I call my survival stage. And it was, I had to get a job, a real job, mm -hmm. acting and doing all that. I couldn't travel the two hours in away from two young kids and um, nobody would hire me. I mean, I, I think I went into a bookstore and I got five fifteen an hour and I cried and I was saying like, you've got to hire me. <laughs> I've got to do this. How old were you at this point? I'm in my thirties. Okay. So probably late thirties or early forties. Yeah. Very hard to get a job, especially when you have two kids. And, and I ended up in a radio. And I thought I could do production because that was kind of my background, but they don't pay to do production in small markets. So I learned the sales end of it and it gave me leeway to be home with the kids and that kind of a thing. So it was like learning all over again, becoming a new person, reinventing myself. A lot of the things with sales was very much like acting because it was persistence. Get You know, you have to deal with rejection, a lot of the same kind of things that you deal with. But then there was the Poconos, which were blizzard upon blizzard. So we ended up uh, uh, you know, stuck in the house for a week sometimes where we had to uh, shovel the snow off the roof. I mean, it was like craziness. Uh, great for the kids because they had this wonderful place where they could uh, live outside. They didn't have cell phones they didn't have yeah. um you know all the social media they didn't have they just had the outdoors no cable tv no um phones um i mean well wow. iphones so uh, they lived an outdoor kind of life so it was it was fun in that respect and this is where i learned to nobody else is going to do it you have to do it yourself and i think jesse saw that particularly as a female because she realized that you can't um that, that you have to um, be able to be self-sufficient. And um, my son learned that you never give up. So if it doesn't work one way, you have to find another way to adapt. So I love those years, even though I call them my survival years. Mm -hmm. Being a single mom isn't very fun because you, in one respect, because you have to you know, plan for driving them all over the place and still working. And um, it, time went by and we survived those winters. <laughs> and then um, I met somebody, we got married and moved into uh, Maryland. So that was another phase where I continued radio with always a desire to get back to acting. That was my mm -hmm. number one goal. Um, the kids had to continue on with their sports, Jesse and gymnastics, Darren and baseball, those are my kids. And um, when they were both past college age, it was time to retire. So I'm fast forwarding through all this time. <laughs> but um, My husband and I retired in North Carolina and that's when I was ready. Before I even moved, I had pictures and resumes. I had been working on acting and went full force into getting back into it. Uh, got an agent and uh, she said, go gray. I'm like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess I could always go back again if I if I wanted to, but um, to be more um, I, it, myself, who I am. So that's what I did, and I started uh, working again in commercials. And it took a while because you have to get to know people. And I worked on a couple of films, so that started that industry, which was a dream come true. It's like you're never too old to chase a dream. I knew I was going to be a grandmother at that time to, to um, 
be a whole new reinvention of myself, which, yeah. you know, it's not, I wasn't the ingenue on <laughs> playing <laughs> bold folders and Jordash anymore. Yeah. So, um, you know, at that time, Jesse, my daughter, Jesse Graff, she's been in American Ninja Warrior for uh, maybe eight se different seasons um, and was one of the top ninjas. And it's gone farther than any other female, actually. And I think and people always, would know her because uh, what does she usually wear? Oh, like a like a, a Wonder Woman kind of a costume. Yes, and, uh, yes. yeah, she has such grace and uh, beauty. And that's what I saw when I was on the sidelines cheering her on. It's like, yeah. wow, I learned growing up that you don't want to get too bulky because it's not feminine. They, they didn't encourage you to lift weights by any means. And I don't think weightlifting contests for women started until the 70s. And that was when, you know, past my, my early years. So um, I saw her and she had muscles and they were beautiful and feminine. And she had such grace and health. And I said to her, I would like to get stronger. Mm. And, and she, I'm sure, gave me a lot of different things. But what I heard her say most specifically was do pull-ups. So I got my bar, I put it in the closet door, and uh, I had handles that I worked on, and I, I wasn't getting anywhere. I didn't have upper body strength. As I was a dancer, but I didn't work the upper body like you know to tighten the muscles. So um, when I retired, I I went to a personal trainer and started working all the muscles. And my goal this time, and I try to make attainable goals. Like in New York, three to five years. Now I wanted to get five pull-ups. So we worked the arms, the back, the chest. We, you know, did the legs. You do whole body. Right. And, you know, some very specific things geared towards pull-ups. And it took me an entire year to get one pull-up. And Going how old were you? Trainer. What was your age at this time? Oh, I got the pull-up when I was 65. But I started 65. working on it at 63. Wow. Wow. And I, I love how you detailed that out and explained it, because I think one of the biggest mistakes in trying to be like, make a goal, like you said, attainable goals, which I think is so important, but is working up toward that pull up. Because I think one of the biggest mistakes is people just get on that bar and they want to try and do it. And then they're discouraged when they can't, instead of building up to that and building that strength. So I, I, I love that you pointed that out. I also have to say right now, you're never too old. Yeah. You're never too old to do exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's never too late. Yeah. Um, so that, in fact, it took me seven months before people would say, you look more toned. Don't you love that term? <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Tone sounds a lot better than you're too bulky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I, I don't think I got bulky. But uh, so... I uh, I was so proud of getting that pull up that I continued on, and that's kind of the story of the ninja part. Um, I before also you, before you move on from that, how many are you doing now? Um, I've kind of settled into twelve to fifteen. Okay. Uh, most I've done is seventeen straight and strict pull ups. Okay. Um, but it's something that you need to work on on a, a regular. Yeah. you know, timeline. I don't do pull-ups every day. I might do five pull-ups every other day, but I don't, you know, sit there and do a million pull-ups. Right. I, I want to keep it and be able to do it, uh, you know, certainly at 10. Yeah. Um, but I'd have to, you know, get back into practice of it a yeah. little bit more, which well, I should do. While we're talking about the pull-ups, because I, I do want to mention the little pull-up challenge that I know is on your Instagram right now. And I've invited several people to do right. that. And um, so is that something they can just go to your page? I know you can sign up on there. I've seen it in your stories. Uh, is that the best way to get to the pull-up challenge that starts? I think it was August 20th, right? It is Sunday, okay. August 20th. Okay. And it is, yes, you can do it through my stories. It'll take you to a link where you find out all the details. <laughs> Um, what you're going to find out in the workshop and uh, you can do it also on a post okay, uh, on my Instagram account too. 
Okay. And I signed up for it too, because Yay. I don't do pull-ups like I used to. And, and we'll discuss some of the things that involve injuries because I have questions on that too. But um, I am just getting back in the swing of really getting into my weight training again, because on June 7th, I donated a kidney to one of my lifelong friends. Wow. And so I have been cleared a few weeks ago to fully get back at it. And after about a 10 week hiatus, you feel it, <laughs> you, you feel the difference. And, yes. and so for me, I want to do some challenges for myself to get back in. So this couldn't have come at the more perfect time. So I'm excited for others to get involved. In Good. It. You have to take it slow and take it in baby steps and also take Everything I do in Ninja is in progressions. Yeah. Um, and you want to find somebody that will help you do that. Like I went to a personal trainer because I don't trust myself to do <laughs> do all the things that I need to do. I, yeah. I'd probably do a set twice and go, okay, that's it. I'm tired. Yeah. But with somebody there that says, oh, your knees are turning in, turn, you know, get your knees out or get yes. your head. It, it keeps you on your toes a little bit more and you know when to go to the next uh, weight up. Um, so I, I like having that direction and that structure. Yeah. Um, At what age did you really start, um, strength training, weight training? Was that in your sixties or did you yes. ever do yeah, it 63. before? Well, I should say that first because I never went to a gym and I had never done sports, um, before I was age 63. And that's, that's when incredible. I retired. Yes, I yeah. guess so. You know, I really didn't think about it. All I wanted to do was get stronger. That's that's all. Yeah. And that's what I put. I, I think that people who do constant dieting would benefit from that mindset is to let me get stronger and work that way instead of, you know, taking diet pills and such. Right. I mean, every each to everybody's own. Obviously, yes. you'll find a way to get there. But to be thinking a different mindset, like I want to get stronger, really uh, focuses you and keeps you on track. And then your diet kind of follows along that because you want more protein. You want, you know, you want to um, help that strength uh, growing process. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that since we're here and you mentioned that is, is nutrition and, and um, you know, your lifestyle with that diet lifestyle. Um, I always hate the word diet kind of, but I don't mean a specific diet. I just mean, right. and and I would love to hear and for you to share the things that have helped you with the listeners understanding that everybody's different and what one person does doesn't mean the other person does. But I think as we age, it's important to, um, I'm 58 and um, I think it's important for women to know um, kind of more how it changes and what your body needs. And I think one of the biggest things for me I've learned is that we need so much more protein than what most women are getting. And especially at this age. And, you know, I'm, I'm a health coach and I coach people. And when I see the amount of protein, a lot of my clients eat, it's just, it's nothing. And I'm like, how are you getting through your days? with with so minimum so I would love to hear kind of your thoughts on uh, nutrition and what 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 it looks like for you um, and especially as as you've been um, I don't want to say aging at the age you're at the, <laughs> at the very young age that you're at what does it look like for you yeah and don't let me forget because I need to talk to you about bone density and your audience about bone density as yes. well but I'll, I'll do nutrition first yes but I have to tell you, since you said aging, that a little boy came up to me after a competition one day and he says, how old are you? And I said, 71. And he went, jaw dropping. And I went, you think that's old? And he goes, for a ninja. <laughs> oh, that I, so I loved sweet. him for that. Yeah. yeah. So before I was saying, I never, um, I never really thought I could get stronger. It never occurred to me that you could keep getting stronger other than just maintaining. But I want your audience to know that you can. You can start 65 or later. You can start in your 90s Yes. Um, if you're doing resistance bands and still get stronger. So 
that's important for people to know, because I think when you raise a family, you stop doing that. I don't have time. You know, there's so many things that get in the way, but you can start late, but there's also ways that you can continue throughout your life. And that's important to do. Yes. Nutrition wise, there are, there are, there was a, I have heart disease in my family. Uh, my brother just had five stents put on. My mother had 11. So I know wow. there's a problem there. And I had discovered some um, plaque in my carotid. And when I had it tested, they said it was 50 to 70% occluded. So that scared me. Yeah. Um, and I went to a vascular surgeon. He said, well, no, you can't reverse that. That's nothing you can do about that. And I'm, I'm like, oh, okay, really? This is pretty scary, you know? Maybe I'll have to have stents someday and maybe I still will. But um, a, a friend said to me, oh, no, 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 you can do something. You've got to read this book. Um, and it was uh, called Prescription for Life. And I went, oh, OK, maybe I can. Maybe I can do something to help this. And for two years, I stopped all red meat. I stopped dairy. I tried to have a uh, little saturated fats. Um, um, I, it was like everything, everything ended. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> what can I eat? Um, and I stuck to that. You know, I had mostly fish and vegetables, really. I didn't know ice cream, it, but <laughs> I did discover that they make ice cream out of oat milk and things. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was it was hard to do. But all I could think of is I had this in my carotid and I just if I could change it in any way. So he said, come back in two years. And so I did. And they did another test and they said it was 40%. And I, I'm asking, and she showed me, you know, it's right at the Y, which is where it tends to be. Um, and I guess your body, my body just produces that. But how did it get to be 40%? And they're saying it could have been the person who read it. It could have been the machine it was on. It could have been the diet. It could have been all of the above, but I was in a good place. So now my diet is still mostly Mediterranean uh, vegetables, lots of fish four times a week. I do have red meat once a month. I do feel that that's not, you know, something that I want to totally get out. I, I moderated it. Mm -hmm. um, I still don't have dairy though. So that's, you know, catering it to my kind of um, body type and knowing history. History is so important when it comes to these issues because, you know, it tends to run in families. Yeah. So what about um, sugar? What about, do you have any oh, sweet sugar. tooth at all or like? My mom got me hooked on having a square of chocolate, dark chocolate. Yes. Yeah. And we think it's healthy for us. So. Yeah. Are you still doing that? Is that still something? Not every day. Not every yeah. day. Yeah, because I do. I do like my little bit because I grew up. We had dessert after every dinner. We had milk with dinner. We had, you know, uh, we we had so many things. Uh, and uh, for years and years, I had no idea all these things are what was making me sick because. I, just back then we, I didn't know anything about food. And um, so I too, I don't, I can eat some dairy sheep and goat, but I cannot, I can't have cow's milk. It just doesn't make me feel good. And also um, it causes inflammation in my body. And so I just don't do it because I, right. I do have arthritis and I always hate to label something because I, I may have it, but I, I do what I can to keep the inflammation down. And um, so, yeah, I think I have several friends that have gone to cardiologists, have gone to different doctors and have the similar things such as you. And so did my husband. And my husband opted also to just change up diet and lifestyle instead of, you know, anything else. And so far it's done amazing for him. Um, you know, so I think I, I love that you did that too and changed it up. And hopefully you never do have to have a stint. Right. Right. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. But yeah, um, the sugar thing is a big, I, I don't drink sodas at all. Yeah. And I haven't yeah. since I was 16. Yeah. But, um, I haven't either. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's so many other, but getting away from sugar is impossible. I think there are what, 33 different kinds of sugar that are in everything. Yeah. So to get more protein, I started having those bars that you find. And then I started looking at the sugar content and I'm like, well, I 
you know, I'm, I'm trying to get healthier. I don't want to just get all this protein and all this sugar too. Yeah. And then there's some bad sugars out there. There's like sucralose that I've, you know, yeah. is in everything, all these energy drinks. So, I mean, you see people looking at ingredients now and they see yeah. these things and they try to stay away from them as much as possible. But I, it's a battle yeah. because I don't even know what half of the sugars are that are out there. Or, yeah. You know, yeah, you really have to look them up and educate yourself, which is what I tell my clients and to learn to really read labels because there's so many hidden things and hidden things that might be a dairy product that you don't even realize it and sugar. And it's, yeah, it's so important to um, learn, you know, and I'll, I'll take ingredients and just Google it and look and realize it's used to make wood pulp and things like that. I'm like, I don't think my body knows what to do with that. You know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like, I don't, I don't think wood pulp is supposed to be in there. Um, well, most of them are sweet. And if they're sweet, you know, it's got something in it. Yes. I, I mean, I think stevia is probably it's still yeah. OK. Yeah. Um, but I don't know a lot of the other ones. Uh, yeah. Until you look them up. But yeah, yeah. it's important to, to try to do that as a minimum. Yeah. Amount. Well, let's talk about the bone density while we're still here and and you know, what you want to add to that, because well, yes. I, it is so in, important. It's such a big, crucial piece to talk about. It is, uh, particularly for your women, but I think men too, I don't, they don't even get tested until later. So um, I think everybody should be tested. Um, but with the bone density, um, I was, uh, um, they, they said I had osteopenia, which is the step before osteoporosis. And um, so when I started lifting weights, and uh, I lifted weights two years, I went back and had a test, of course, every two years you do, and it had reversed. Mm. It was statistically uh, different. And that was wonderful to me. And I wanted to shout to the world that look at what lifting weights did. You can literally uh, reverse that process. Mm -hmm. And we, so many people have osteo pina and osteoporosis and my friend I have to tell you her story she uh, went and and was told that she had lost seven percent of her bone mass and it's uh, Americans lose one to two percent of bone mass per year after I don't know age 30. I'm not quite sure about the age 30 but one to two percent a year is like too much yes. I don't want to lose that um and so she asked the doctor, can I reverse this? She had osteopenia. Can I reverse this? And he said, no, you mm -hmm. can't. Um, so I think that message is still out there. And I'm like, no, Sally, you, you can't. You can't start, you know, getting those weights, you know, lifting a little bit more. Um, walking, did, he tell her there was, did he tell her there was anything she could do? No, she's, she just, says you can't do anything. Just, you can't. Wow. No, they, there's medicines out there. Yeah. Now, some people really need it. I mean, we have different types of bone structures in, in people. So don't get me wrong. Not everybody can reverse it. But I think I wish people in their 20s and 30s would wise up to the fact that they can have a better quality of life if they do this now and prevent that from happening. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I true. wanted to shout it to the world that, yes, you can reverse these kind of things. And then I had somebody else that told me that you can't reverse osteoporosis, osteopenia. And, you know, there I am just going, really? Gee, you know, there must be a way. And then I just heard from somebody else that she had reversed her osteoporosis. So, uh, you know, I think we have to be our own advocates. Yes. And we have to look into these things and and do a lot of research and find out, you know, different ways um, and really look into it. Talk to your doctor, obviously. Yes. Um, that, and a lot of doctors do say to do the weightlifting and do the walking because the walking has the impact. That we'll talk mm -hmm. about. That's, that's what I tell. I mean, that's one of my biggest statements to my clients is become your own best health advocate because don't just take whatever a, a doctor may tell you as complete fact, go research it, look it up, you know, do your own investigations and research and become your own advocate for your health, Absolutely. because it's so important. And again, I'm not saying either that the doctors aren't right, but it's good to go out and, and educate yourself 
and to, to learn. And when there's something in you hurting or aching, or even as we get older, it that's a sign, that's a symptom saying, hey, there's something going on here. Let's look into it. But even with the, the strength training and the bone density, uh, for, for us, as we do get older, we want to protect those bones and the muscles help protect it, help strengthen the bones. So if you fall, you're much less likely to get a severe break, or even if you do to recover quicker. And that's why I think it's so important. Um, and I love that you're talking about that too, because it's just not talked about enough. Right. And, and uh, the same with muscles, um, you lose 30% of lean muscle mass by 60 years old. It's a lot, yes. 50% by age 70. Yeah. If, but it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. yeah. You know, you can, it, you, muscles don't age just because you're getting older. <laughs> you know, right. you can exactly. work them. And again, I wish we could get that message out to our younger audience as yes. well as our older, yes. you know, because yeah. older, you, it's not too late to start now. Yeah, I just always recommend if you have never done anything to go to a person, you know, talk to your doctor, but go to a personal trainer who can yeah. guide you. Because a yeah. lot of times people go in and they just start, okay, like, here's a 10 pound weight. Let me, oh, let me try to do that. And they're hurting themselves. And they, injured, get, which is, and they get hurt and then they quit. And then it's just, and the other thing I hear all the time is a lot of people do not go to the gym. And I, I think more so women, but I could be wrong because they're so intimidated when they get in there and they're intimidated that everyone's looking at them, that they're doing it incorrectly. And again, I think that's where a trainer can help and help them get that proper form and get that confidence that they need. But I just, I want to share with everyone, nobody cares as much as we think they do. And they're not looking at us as much as we think they are, except maybe someone like you, where they're going, wow, look at her. <laughs> but, but, you know, I just want women to get out there and just know uh, that you can do this and it's okay to go in the gym and not know it all, you know? Yeah. There's uh, just a, a future of possibilities. Yes. So I don't want people to get that idea that, do you know, after 50 or 60, your life is over and it's just all about, you know, sitting and cooking and, you know, yeah, yeah. it's, there's so much out there and seniors are doing so much more than they did before. Um, I do swimming, um, competitive swimming in the senior Olympics or senior games, they call it. And um, I went to one in Albuquerque in 2019 for swimming, but there was a woman there that was doing um, track and she started running at age 100 and she was still running at 103. Her name was Julia Hurricane Hawkins. And I uh, always give her as an example because it's mind blowing. Um, the swimmers were at 80 and 90 years old and they had trouble getting up to the block where you dive off. Mm -hmm. They needed help. But they dove and they did a flip turn and they did a 200 yard. Uh, That's stroke. incredible. And I was so impressed by seeing where you can go and how you can continue. And I just did it um, this past year in Pittsburgh. And there was a woman there, 97, and she broke six records. <laughs> <laughs> and was she swimming or was she doing something else? She was swimming. Wow. I mean, that's incredible. And I've seen some of the clips from the senior games. And yeah. I just, in fact, I think I had shared one in my on my post or story on Instagram because I, I'm like, people need to see this, that yes, we don't just stop and give up because I'm doing more now than I ever did, honestly, in, in my younger years. And oh, I'm I feel stronger it. than ever. Yeah. And it feels yeah. good and I feel good. And yeah. um, I just want others to know that. And that's exactly why I wanted you on too, because I know what an encouragement you would be. So so tell us, give us your ninja experience. Like, what did that look like? How did you train? Um, I mean, how, how do you even begin with that? Because, wow, it's, uh, I, I did the obstacle course in Wilmington, North Carolina when I visited my my son and his wife. And I, I did not do all of it um, just because I wasn't at a point yet where I can, but I did play with the stuff while my son was running through all of them. And it's just like, it looks easier than it is. 
And I would say that. <laughs> yeah. Being on the show, it definitely, those athletes make it look so easy. They do. They make me go, I could do that so easy. And then I just that little bit I was there, I was like, oh, this is, this is tough. Yeah, very, <laughs> yeah, it's very intimidating too. Yes. Yeah, um, you know, on the show itself, we film it at night. So this one was in Los Angeles and it was cold. It was a cold spell. Actually, we were postponed one day because of rain. So it was not fun at night with the cold temperature mm -hmm. and the, you know, at night. Yes. I actually didn't go on until after one o'clock in the morning. Oh, you're kidding. No. In fact, they took a, a what they called this. A, a lunch break at 12 30 because uh the crew they they have to work so many hours and then they have to break and just as i was going on they took a break so that was crazy but um you don't you don't well, you really see the obstacle for the first time when you go through rules and they have one demo or tester go through the obstacle they tell you the rules you can't touch this you can't touch that uh they show you how it how it goes with with a you know a tester who knows what they're doing yeah <laughs> and um that's all you don't get to touch the the obstacle at all you don't get a trial run beforehand or anything no oh I had no idea yeah that's the scary part and I was prepared because the last I don't know five years or so they had a certain first obstacle that had been done it was called the shrinking steps and you run up the steps jump to a rope and go to a platform and I I had that down but they changed it oh no they no. changed it to a pole vault where you and that to had to be intimidating I mean was that Very. like yeah going into it thinking oh I got this and then and then all of a sudden you're like oh wow okay so what was going through your mind fear yeah. <laughs> anxiety yeah yeah. So, but, but my daughter hopped up on the sidelines and she was going, stop, breathe. There were certain key words that, you know, I told her, don't say too much because it's, I, my brain can't take it. I need one word things. And so we came up with the words and it was punch to punch on the mini tramp, to jump to the pole vault and grab. So it was punch, grab. Climb, 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 climb. <laughs> and you did, you did, you were climbing. And, I climbed. and then the last one was tight. And that's as the pole falls down. So you don't hit the water to tighten up. So I just held that pole really close and I crawled to the end. So as it's fallen down, it's it was quite explain. a moment. No, because I, when I watched it, I was just like, go, 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 go. <laughs> you know, it's just like, is she going to make it? Because I didn't know yet how far you made it. Yeah. And so when I saw that, I didn't know. And then when you made it, I'm like, yes, she did it. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know at that point that I had made history because I, I didn't even know that as the first person, no, the oldest, the oldest person to get through the one obstacle. That is incredible. Woo. You know, I mean, the so I, was, I felt person. really good about that. Yeah. Okay. So how many obstacles did you get through? It was the one. Is that Just correct? the one. Okay. Just so the, one. the next one is, the, I don't even know how to explain it. You probably can explain it better where well, you did let it, go. It's called um, grease lightning. So okay. it's, it's called that for a reason. It goes very, very fast. Yeah. You hold on to two nunchucks that have like, uh, I don't know whether it's a chain or some kind of rope that's holding them together. So they're on both sides of what looks like a zip line, but it's not a line, it's a, a, a pole. And it has two big drops in it. So some people fell on those drops, you know, cause you're yes. holding these nunchucks and then you go over the drop and you'd slip off of them or some people would. And I tightened up into a little ball and made both of the drops. And then the end came too fast. I wasn't ready to uh, dismount. Mm -hmm. So I did what I'd seen somebody else do, which was to really, you know, push myself back as far as I could and then try to dismount again. But I had lost the momentum. And I think I went back five times holding those doggone nunchucks. You I did it a lot. lot. You did. I was <laughs> like, I mean, I have chills right now because I was just watching, going, come on, come on, you could do it. And you were holding on like uh, for dear life. And then and showing your daughter, I'm just like, oh, I can't. And I heard her saying, um, 
keep fighting, keep yeah. fighting. And I'm like, I've lost all momentum. There was no hope. And yeah. she knew it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Didn't you look at her? Did you, did you shake your head? Did you say it's okay? I remember you did something. And that's when I, I, I tears. Yeah, I dropped, well, I was in the, what they call the L's where my arms are at 90 degrees. And so I dropped down to straight arms and I yes. looked down and I'm like, nope, I, I can't do it. And I thought, I might as well do one more pull up to show yeah. I've got strength. So I pulled myself yeah. up again and then dropped. <laughs> yeah, it was incredible. And I mean, even when you came up and and smiled, I mean, I don't know if you were disappointed or sad or, or oh, well, I absolutely was, I was thrilled. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what it felt like. And the um, audience was with me. Everybody was oh, just so. I've never uh, heard them yell like that. I mean, everybody <laughs> was just going crazy. And even like I said, as I watched it, it was just like, and when you came, uh, I mean, I did. I just, I had tears. I was like, man, that is just incredible that you fought that hard. And I really wanted to get it. <laughs> I know. So are you, are you going to do it again? Are you training? I for hope that? to. I yeah. hope to. Yeah. Um, I, I need to work on my, dis in fact, today I was at my friend's house in Oak Island, which is not very far away from my house. He's built some obstacles and I was working on, he has a zip line, but it still has the same principle of how do you the platform, I have to say, was way far away. If I had let go on my first time down, mm -hmm. I would have hit the edge and gone down just like many other people did. So I have to learn how to launch and throw and get a good dismount. So that's kind of what I'm working on now. So how do you do all that? This is where I wanted to kind of come in on any injuries. I When I see that, I mean, I envision shoulders just coming dislocated. And I mean, some of, them, some of them seem so intense on on your body. And so how do you deal with that with injuries or, um, you know, because like I have in my, in my arm, it really, when I do weight, I'm, it tweaks a lot. You know, there's certain little things that I know. And I'm like, how are you dealing with anything like that? Do you do any kind of um, muscle recovery therapy? Share, share kind of well, what you that do is, for that. That is important, but warming up is important too. Like I don't do upper body things until I've done a couple of pull-ups. I've done some scapula um, retractions where you, you mm -hmm. pull it down. Um, and I try to warm up my shoulders. Um, my daughter has had several injuries and she had both her shoulders done and her knee all in you know close proximity and that was from injuries that she had gotten and it, it it's tough she says uh and I like the way she says it is that you have to build armor around all your joints mm -hmm. so you want to strengthen those muscles that will help you but um I do it in progressions like I don't like jump to a lache is you swing on one bar you throw and then grab another bar mm -hmm. sometimes they're four feet five feet ten feet apart um so i will touch it i will throw to touch it and come down and that's what i do mostly is i'll jump up i touch it and uh, just get the feel of it and then sometimes i'll go with two hands touch it and come down and i i go very slowly. I always land on my toes. Not, I don't want to hit my heels because I do have back problems, but yes, they're not due to um, ninja. They're, I have a spondyloathesis where the spine has actually moved apart mm. in the lower L4 and 5. So um, I can't do too much uh, anything that has to do with a back bend. Okay. It's, it's funny you say that because I too have issues in the, in mine's in the L4, L5 and the same thing. It's, yeah, it's, I'm, that's something that I've been working on right now um, with that, you know, just Absolutely. making sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, yes. and be, and because of my surgery, needless to say, the abs are not there right now. Um, yeah. There's, there's a lot. And so I do, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that and I'm careful because I know if my core isn't strong, I have potential to cause more injury. Um, are you doing other things other than strength training? Do you do any other kind of uh, yoga or anything? Else? I know you swim. Yeah. Swimming is one of the biggest things that I wanted to bring that up too, because cardio is so very important too. And I think that helps the blood flow. 
that's the way I think. I have this image in my mind that the, when I'm running or getting out of breath, when I'm really moving that cardio, I feel that the blood is like gushing through and maybe it'll take some of that plaque out of it. Yeah, yes. <laughs> but yeah. you should be doing cardio four times a week and you should be doing uh, strength training two to three times a week. And you can do um, strength and cardio in the same day. But those are th- that. That's just kind of a plan to ha- of action. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, you're not going to start out that way, but you start. How slowly. long do How long do you do cardio, and do you still have a trainer also for your? Well, cardio is all of the swimming. I swim for an hour with a huge workout, and wow. it. I used to think I can't do this anymore, and then yeah. we have partners in our lane. And she's a beast, this girl. <laughs> and I go, well, if she's doing it, I can do it. That's yeah. why I hope all your audience will say, well, wait a minute, she's 71. She's doing that. I, I think I better get off this couch. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I fully believe people are saying that. <laughs> so um, anyway. Well, and what I love too is, I mean, you are an, an inspiration to um, maybe women your age or women that are getting older, but what an inspiration to younger women too, because I have a daughter that's 20 and um, I, the whole your age is not your cage applies to her generation and, and all of them is that don't let your age hold you back from doing things. Don't let your age hold you back Absolutely. from using your voice to help others. And um, I feel like when women see people like you and me and at different ages going out of the norm from what they know, uh, what an inspiration and example to set. And you're, I mean, you're doing exactly that. Well, thank you. Um, I I hope so. I mean, that's why I started in, Instagram was to get people to see what what is what seniors can do that you can do a lot more than you think you can yes a lot of it is just getting rid of those stereotypes like you you don't want to get too bulky which i think people still think today um and i think they got to think more about their health at an earlier age but at any age and be sure to do that working out um i usually tell people to start with walking yeah. I mean, that's easy to do. Everybody can do it. You know? I walk a lot. I'm I'm, yeah. I'm a walker. It's my therapy. It's my, you know, it just helps release for me. It's just my time. Now with the temperatures in Texas right now, where every day has been about 108. If you don't walk early, <laughs> I'm not walking. It's it's pretty bad that's right now. That's a good now, time but... to exercise anyway. Yes. That's a really good time. I do all but... mine in the morning early. I like not to only early. that, but scientifically, I think they've said is, is to, feel the sun, yes. you know, first thing in the morning mm-hmm. is going to put you in a better mood as well. Yeah. yeah. So tell me what's next for you. Like what, what do you have on the horizon? What, and are you still doing acting commercials? Kind of tell everyone what it looks like next for you. And I would love for you to share what some goals are that you have right now. Cause it sounds like you make goals for yourself. And I, I that do. Too. Yeah. That's a so big important. Thing. Yeah, goals. I I like every day. I'm like, <laughs> I ask people, so what's your goal today? And they're like, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you'll hear to get through the day, and it's yeah. like, how about something a little better than that? <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and every time I go over to my friend's house to do ninja, there's a goal. There's something that I want to accomplish that I feel good about. So, and that's what will happen is that you want to find something that you feel good about you know, that you accomplished this, that I got out every day. If I don't do something like with swimming, if I don't do it on my regular days, if I miss a day, it gives me an excuse to miss another day. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, very, very goal um, uh, dominant. I have to like um, be thinking of, I want to beat my personal best in swimming. And I have a state meet coming up in September. So um, after nationals, I... I haven't done, I didn't do as well as I thought I would do. Um, I came in third, fourth, and fifth in some of the things, and I wanted to do better. So this time I want to do better than that. I want to, but it's beating my time. That's what it's all about because I want to improve. It's, I I want to have a goal when I go to swimming, which I was uh, answering your question about how long do I do cardio? It's an hour of with the swimming, but sometimes it may be a five minute run 
or it may be on the um, treadmill where I try to, you know, do at least 20 minutes. Yeah. Now, and do I you think, and your daughter train together? Yes, we do. We do a lot. She does yeah. a lot of recovery things because she's been injured. She's, you know, goes at it a lot stronger than I do. She yeah. attempts things that I wouldn't attempt. <laughs> So she does a lot of recovery, but she does uh, a, a lot of uh, building muscle as well. Yeah, yeah. So um, the cardio, what did you ask me? Goals. Um, yeah, so just I what are your goals? Personal what? Best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the swimming. In swimming. Um, that's one thing. I do want to get better at Ninja still. I mean, I haven't seen my last day there. I There are certain things that if I got the technique... I don't have the background that most ninjas do of either gymnastics or track or rock climbing or, you know, sports. They or you know, a zillion other things. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have that that understanding of a proper swing or how to get that swing to to launch off. So it takes me a lot longer, and I want to get more uh, skilled at at certain things. And so both of those things have have my interest um i'd like to get into a little bit of into rock climbing i think that sounds mm -hmm. fun it's if it was just closer it's kind of hard to divide myself in a million different directions yeah but acting wise um yeah i just worked on a film it, i don't know that this will be the title it's still in post-production but it's called um uh your card cordially invited yeah cordially invited it's with will Farrell and Reese Witherspoon. So I did not meet them. I did not have a scene with them, but, and it's just a small thing, but it was a lot of fun. Oh, it's a little different. It, so you don't. Stunt you, the first you, time. Did you really, what did you do? I can't say. I signed <laughs> one of those NDAs. Yeah. Took, yeah. So we have to wait. Find me a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need that. <laughs> no. No, um, and I worked on a movie called Palms with Diane Keaton in 2019, which was the one of the most exciting things. Uh, she, I got to be a yoga person. Well, that's the other exercise that I do when you ask me, and I didn't finish the, the question, is I, I do yoga to, to lengthen the muscles. Okay. How often do you do that? Because I know that's going to be a question. Twice a week. Twice a week. Yeah. Right. Um, well, I love that. Did you meet Diane Keaton? When you yes, I you worked. To, uh, we we worked for six weeks, yeah. and um, it was she started a cheerleading cl club. We were all over sixty-seven years old, and she was at one of these retirement places where you can start your own club. And she wanted to do a cheerleading club, which <laughs> becomes hilarious. Yeah, and um, so I was the yoga one who was trying out to be in in one of the cheerleaders. So we spent a great deal of time learning the choreography, doing things uh, day to day. And she was marvelous. She that was is so fun. Time. And I can't wait for our listeners to just go look up some of your stuff. And after seeing you now, but then to see you in a whole nother realm of what, what you do. I think that's so fun to, to see that and to hear your goals and the things you're doing. It's just, um, again, you know, 71, you're still 71, right? You haven't had a birthday. No, but I went on October. So I'm going to have to change everything. 72. <laughs> I know. Oh, I yeah, yeah. yeah, 72 in October. I'll be 59 in October. So I'm on the edge of entering my 60s. But I can tell you there's uh, at age is a number. And I do want to mention because you're saying, I love it. Strength is ageless. Um you know, I know I've seen that on some of your stuff and um, it's just, I, I that, want that. That means that I want to, I want to show my granddaughter. Yes. Like people my age just don't do some of these things. And, and I want to show them what is possible for them in the future too. Yeah. And be a, a model for her as well as somebody who hasn't ever done exercise in their life and mm -hmm. they need, you know, that showing that that you can do it yes so true well so tell everyone um and i'll put it in the show notes too but where are the best places to find you well i started at instagram actually it was because i fell when i did the first time i did american ninja warrior uh on the first obstacle 
And I was devastated because I thought I'd let my daughter down. I'd let all seniors down. It's just, and then every time the show came on and I saw how those athletes made that first obstacle look, I just, it was just a tough time. And and Jesse kind of was saying, but look at what you have accomplished. Look Mm -hmm. at what you have done. I mean, so you fell on that one fall doesn't define you. All that kind of thing. You know, this negative talk we give ourselves, we got to get rid of it. Um, so true. So with Instagram, I would do, uh, you know, different things that I could do, you know, pegboard, I mean, interesting things. And it, it sort of took off and it made me feel better. Uh, and, and the other people were motivated and inspired for, uh, by it. So that's my main thing right now. And it's just my name, Jenny McCall, which is G-I-N-N-Y. McCall is M-A-C-C-O-L-L. That's my Facebook. That's my um, YouTube, which is where my old commercials are, and a bunch of other stuff that just appeared there. I don't know why or how. <laughs> this technology is too much for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it it sounds like you're in all the places that everyone can find you, and um, and to find you for the pull up challenge coming up. And it's not a it's not a pull up challenge. It's a pull up workshop. So oh, that's right. Workshop. Who have not been able to get a um a pull up we'll get some really key ideas of what to do how to start and how to continue yes yes it, which is exactly why i did it too so i could learn the steps again just to kind of get back into that and master that too so I'm and i'm just a guest host that. i'm not a, the, the girl who actually has started this has done it has been teaching pull ups for 3 years so she, she's got a pattern yeah of what she does but I I will show some of the things that I did at my ripe age yeah (laughs) to get started and I'll you know give some uh, background on who I am as well yes yes I've seen her page too and yeah I love I've watched some of her stuff and and just love um what she's doing too but I'm just I'm inspired by everybody that gets out there and just shows that physical fitness you know just working toward being the healthiest version of yourself is just going to benefit you as you get older. And um, so I have to ask you, because this is called your age is not your cage. um, And you've really kind of answered it all. But is there anything you haven't said in? Is there any other way that you're not letting your age hold you back? Is there something else? Or, I mean, you like I said, you've already shared so much of what you're doing that you're not letting your age be your cage. But I always ask everyone at the end. Well, uh, I would say first thing is technology because I laughed about it. But I had to when I moved to the the south again um, and worked with the acting in the southeast. Uh, you have to know how to video and upload it, and it's it's done you know, online where you send your audition, they send you the script and you have to learn all the ways to, to do this. And so that's, that was a big, difficult thing to just get into, you know, computer wise. Yeah. Um, I, Cause I didn't grow up with them yeah. and my kids didn't grow up. We didn't have a computer until 1998 yeah. So it was it it was just trial and error, and I'm not scared to hit buttons and just <laughs> you know, try to to find my way through. And now I'll just Google something like I don't know how to do this, and add music to something. And you know, there's all sorts of guidelines. So it's just it's researching. It's not letting. I I just won't let not knowing um, hold me back mm-hmm. because there's a way to find out. I don't, like sometimes my husband will say, um, no, you can't do that. And I'm like, all right, (laughs) watch me. (laughs) Did he just say can't? (laughs) And I usually say, don't say I can't do that. Say I can't do that yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there's, um, you know, get rid of the stereotypes, uh, change your perspective. Um, You can do a lot more than you think you can. Um, get rid of the negative thought. Um, you know what what may seem impossible right now can become possible. Uh, get a plan, have some goals, uh, get started. I mean, you could start tomorrow with walking. Mm-hmm. You know, and just do it five days a week, twenty minutes. You know, and then get your heart rate up. Eat, 
do it now. Yeah, yeah. And that's, uh, you know, what a great, I think that's such a great way to end it because it's like, take those baby steps, whatever they are, but get started, do it now. It's just so important. And just habits that we created can become good habits. Just like the bad ones, We once we start walking, it becomes a habit. Once we start exercising, whatever it may be for that person, it becomes a good, healthy habit. And it's just starting. Yeah, it so. becomes a habit. You're right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you go, wow, how did I ever not do this? And then you get excited to try something new. And that's that's exactly what you're showing in these things that you are trying and you're doing in the you know, that's, that's an answer to your question too. try new things. I'm yes. not intimidated about trying new things. Yes. I used to be, I used to like, no, I'm not going to, that's too high. I have a fear of heights, but yeah. now it's like, well, yeah, I'll give it a try. Yeah. Well, and I don't know about you, but I feel like with my age has come wisdom. And also in that, I don't really care what anyone thinks where back in the day, I might've given a little more thought to what someone thought, or if I look silly doing what I'm doing, well, I don't care now. I just do it. We were taught that. Yeah. We mm -hmm. were taught that growing up. Yeah. Yeah. And so <laughs> I just do it. So, yes. Yeah, so, oh my gosh, thank you so much. I could probably just talk to you all day. But yeah, no, this has been fun. I appreciate it. I really, really hope that some of your listeners will, will get started and somehow be motivated and, you know, follow me if you can and, and yeah. see what's possible. Um, it may not be ninja for you. I mean, I could understand that, yeah. but, but there's so much out there that yeah. you can do. Find that passion. That's right. There's something out there for everybody. And so thank you for just inspiring me, for inspiring other women. And I just know that I am probably all my listeners are going to be on the sidelines, just cheering you on every step of the way. So thank oh, you. That would be great. I need yeah. the cheers. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got them. You've got yes. them. Um, okay. You. All right, Jenny. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And okay. thank you to your audience as well. Okay. Thanks. Take care. All right. You too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.